What's up YouTube? Alright, so this is going to be a video about my favorite TV show and I'm going to go into a little story in a little bit. How I Met Your Mother. If you can buy this box set, by all means, buy it. Buy this box set. It is worth it. I bought this on Amazon. And the reason I bought it is because I love this. I, I love this show. This show means a lot to me. And see, you'll get, you'll get a box, and, and if you're going to ask me, do I always watch these episodes off of the discs? No, I actually watch them on Netflix, but sometimes I take this out to watch them. But if you're going to ask me why, why would you buy the box if you watch it on Netflix? It's because I'm afraid of losing the DVDs, like I do a lot. That's why I keep them in the box. And... This is all nine seasons, all 208 episodes, and it's worth it. I know this show isn't for everyone, but my kind of sense of humor is a little bit different. But this sense of humor is a lot funnier than you might think. This show meant a lot to me over, over the years that I've watched it. Now, if you're going to ask me something about this, why am I showing? I'm just showing you that... That this is a show that's actually worth the money and worth the time watching actually how I met your mother was my favorite was my favorite show for a while and has been since I saw it the first time now how I met your mother is this one was about 70 bucks for all seven seasons or for all nine seasons I mean and it was on for nine years it started in 2005 Alright, so, How I Met Your Mother box it, by all means buy it, and I'll tell you a little story. So this is going to contain spoilers, so I'm going to put that in the title, but I told you a little bit, um, How I Met Your Mother. I'm going to review a little bit and tell you a little bit about it, but How I Met Your Mother is a great show, and by all means watch it, because it helped me out when I was stressed out. Now, I'm going to get to discussion about this, my favorite show. So, How I Met Your Mother started off with a guy named Ted. He was telling them the story. The narrator was Bob Saget. So, so he has some friends in this show. And it's telling him how he met the mother. But he wants to tell them everything that led up to the point of him meeting the mother. So, he wanted to tell his kids the entire story. Okay, so you start off with Ted and Marshall... And you get, and then there's Barney and Lily, and then there's Robin. So the first one in the gang, um, there's a group of friends, and over the years, they um, they hang out. They're best friends, you know. This this box set is worth it too. Okay, so you start off with Ted telling them that he's gonna tell them the story of how how I met your mother. That's what he said. So you start off with him, Bob Saget, narrating the character that he's narrating about this story. Um, and then the younger version was played by Josh Radner, and then there was Jason Segel, and there's Neil Patrick Harris, Allison Hannigan, and Kobe Smulders. The main character of the show is, of course, Ted, who is the storyteller. Sorry, keep on showing this, about how he met the mother. And... And then there's Jason, and the and he's an architect who's who always looks for love. And then in in the show he I've seen the show at least almost four times by now. So he what he does is he wants to tell them how he met the mother, but he wants to keep the story from 2005 to 2014 and and he has friends he has Marshall Marshall lives with him and he's from and he's from uh he any any and he's known Ted since college and then and then there's Lily who he met around the same time because he and her were over at the were in the same college they they all went to college together so that's how they were friends, and then, and then Marshall, 
Marshall was an, wanted to be a lawyer, an, envir an environmental lawyer, and and he's with Lily, and then they get engaged, and then there's Barney, who's one of Ted's friends he met over in the bathroom. They met at the urinal, and they were talking and uh, getting to know each other, and then he wanted to teach him how to live, and then he wanted to, and he was wearing a suit. He uh, Barney wears suits a lot, and Ted doesn't wear suits as much, but yeah, their suits are a big part of this, of this, and then there's, and then there's Robin, who's, who becomes Ted's new friend and the new member of the gang, as they call it, the group of friends, they all, excuse me, sit at the table, drink beer or whatever kind of liquor they drink, I think Barney got me into gin and tonics, but I had heard about them before gin and tonics, and then I started drinking gin and tonics a little bit. I don't really drink very often, but gin and tonic is just gin and tonic water, which is actually pretty good. Now I'll tell you something. Um, so their job descriptions are a little bit different. I kept on forgetting what Barney does because, but he works at Goliath National Bank, and Ted's an architect who designs buildings, and he's designed a few buildings, and then he got, and then he was finally able to design a building in the end rather than just he was able to have a building built and then there's Marshall who wanted to be an environmental lawyer he he works at a firm then he worked at he worked for some other places and then he worked for Garrison Coots environmental lawyer and then later he became a, a judge and all that and yeah and then there's and then there's Lily, who's a kindergarten teacher slash painter. And then there's, um, and then there's uh, Robin, who's a news anchor, and and Robin becomes a new a, a new person in in the show, um, in in the group. She becomes a member of the group in two thousand five. So what happened was. As I started to watch the show, I started to see that I actually, instead of was seeing dumb comedy like I usually do, I was seeing brilliant comedy. Yeah, and and uh, Brittany told me about the show one night because I was showing her a scene from Forgetting Sarah Marshall when Jason Segel said, I got a surprise for you, and he was showing off his body, and, 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 and I was asking her if she knows him, and she said, yeah, that's the guy from How I Met Your Mother, and I just then heard about the show started talking to her and then my brother told me about it <coughs> and I had seen Jason Siegel in a few movies before so so then she said you should watch How I Met Your Mother Jason Siegel's in it and then I was watching it and then I got kind of kind of annoyed with the automated laughter in the background before in TV shows but then I just showed to ignore it because I can't to fall in love with the show and I was really loving that show and then and then um so I watched the whole show and then I missed it and then I realized it, it was my favorite show and then one time in, and then I didn't plan on re-watching it for a while and I, I wasn't sure if I was going to watch it again but then one time in 2015 or one time in 2016, I watched it in 2015, a year after it ended. In 2016, I was sitting at my computer on Netflix, and I was just going through it, and then I just decided to watch it again. And I hope that stays on Netflix forever, because it's a great show. It's worth it. It's worth the time. It's worth watching. I love How I Met Your Mother. Now, I'm going to tell you something about this. The... the the way they work together, all the characters, they are great. I mean, I like I like the whole gang. My favorite out of the whole out of the whole group. Now I'm not gonna say I hate I don't even hate any of the characters, but my favorite out of all of them like a lot of people had told me that um people have mixed feelings about the group. Like one person I asked liked Barney the best, then liked Marshall, then Ted then Robin, then Lily, and then some people liked, 
one and that was the same with another guy who I asked and the one guy liked Barney or one person liked Marshall, Barney, Robin, Lily, then Ted and one person said Barney, Marshall, Robin, Ted, then Lily. Because some, pe some people have complained that that Ted's just too picky and they don't like his character. This is my my uh, my way, and people had actually slammed my uh, had actually criticized my picking Marshall, Ted, Barney, Robin, Lily. But I do like Barney, and in some episodes I prefer some characters over others because Barney has some really good moments. But I mean. I think Ted has some brilliant comedy things when he makes fun of when he makes fun of Barney and all that. I mean, the gang was great together. Marshall being, I mean, Marshall had a lot of funny moments too, and he was the reason I started to watch the show was because of Jason Segel. And to be honest, I I knew Jason Segel before I watched the show, and I knew Neil Patrick Harris just a little bit from Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. Harold and Kumar escape from Guantanamo Bay. And something funny was, I, I started to watch a very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas during the summer, even though it's a Christmas movie. I just decided to watch it because I wanted to see what it was like, and I was still in the middle of watching the show, How I Met Your Mother, on Netflix. But I have the Harold and Kumar movies on DVD. And, yeah, Harold and Kumar is a really stupid funny, but I expand in brilliant comedy, stupid, stupid funny... Um, some drama, some action, yeah. Okay, so moving on in my in my top pick, I would have to say that my favorite movie on my on the oh, or my favorite movie with these people. I don't even know most of these people in in the movie. I only know Kobe Smulders from the Avengers, and I don't, and I know. Harold and I know um, um, Neil Patrick Harris from Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Harold and Kumar escape from Guantanamo Bay. A very Harold and Kumar 3D Christmas, and actually, a million ways to die in the West. I saw the first two Harold and Kumars, and when I was watching the first episode, I recognized Neil Patrick Harris. I didn't know Josh Radner or Allison Hannigan at all. I just knew Kobe Smulders a little bit. But, I mean, I've seen Jason Segel, I mean, in so many episodes. Or, in so many movies. Like, the first movie I ever saw with him was Slackers. And then I saw him Knocked Up, and I knew who he was. And then I saw the movie, um, Forgetting Sarah Marshall. And then I just looked up. Then I just looked him up so I could see what else he was in. So what else I could see him in. I saw him in I Love You Man. And I saw him in Bad Teacher's Sex Tape. And then I watched. And then I bought. Uh, and then I started watching How I Met Your Mother. And watched the whole show all the way through. Actually quite frankly I watched six episodes. Then quit watching it. And then I watched the. And then I started to watch it again. And I watched the whole show. Loved it. You know. You know, I would recommend watching How I Met Your Mother if you've had a rough day or a rough week. Just watch this and maybe your roughness will go away and maybe you'll find something to laugh at. Because when I was watching How I Met Your Mother, or when I had a s stressful day at work, I would watch three episodes a night before going to bed and I would laugh and have a good time and I would just smile. Knowing that I was actually having a great time. <sighs> and... It's worth it. I mean, this show meant a lot to me. It's been like a friend to me. It's been like... So I'm going to tell you what I do, why I watch How I Met Your Mother. It's because the comedy really, really speaks to me in a way that no other comedy actually ever had. Like, when I'm lonely, when my girlfriend's out, like, out at um work... Or out grocery shopping or out for the day. I'll just watch How I Met Your Mother and laugh. And then... And... I mean, the most important person in my life to me is my... Girlfriend. 
and we've been together for over six years and she means like and she got me into the show and it meant a lot to me that she did get me into the show because I love the show and I mean I love to watch this with her and my friends like I'm actually thinking about moving out here and moving into an apartment with my best friend Nick and his fiance and and my future wife all I, I just wish that all of us could sit on the couch or sit on a or sit somewhere and just watch the show together and have a good time um, have a few snacks have a few drinks have just start to laugh and be all friendly and and have a lot of fun with each other watching that yeah so I know Jason Siegel from slackers I know him from Slackers, Knocked Up, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, I Love You Man. He wasn't in Get You to the Greek, Get Him to the Greek. That was a Forgetting to Sarah, Forgetting Sarah Marshall sequel, but he he wasn't actually in the show, in the movie. He was just a writer and a producer. But then there was, but then I saw him in Bad Teacher. I've seen him in friends with benefits even though he was just in the movie so he was uncredited in that friends with benefits but I recognized him since he was in there but he wasn't credited then there was Jeff who lives at home which was kind of sad the five year engagement which was funny this is 40 this is the end which he was uncredited for I saw him in sex tape and I've seen him in how I Met Your Mother and Freaks and Geeks. Out of out of my favorite thing he's in, it's Forgetting Sarah Marshall. Get him. It's Forgetting Sarah Marshall. How I Met Your Mother. I Love You Man and Knocked Up are my four favorite things he's in. And I saw him in one episode of Family Guy too because he was he was a marshal. He was just presenting the cast of How I Met Your Mother, and there was. Josh, there was Josh Radner as Ted Mosby, Barney Stinson as, or Neil Patrick Harris as Barney Stinson, and Jason Siegel as Marshall Erickson, and they killed them, or deleted him, and then one person said that, one person made fun of How I Met Your Mother, um, A lot of people love this show and a lot of people hate it. One one guy said said this said One person said exactly how I feel about that shit show and then I told him if you think the show sucks, you're on crack. Jason Siegel and Josh Radner, Neil Patrick Harris is great also. And he said, How I Met Your Mother is basically a soap opera for college kids. It tries to be funny and fails embarrassingly hard. And you should feel bad for liking it. And I got offended by that because it was my girlfriend who got me into that show. And I love the cast. And then he said, I'll give you... And he said, I'll give you that one. Jason Siegel... MPH, abbreviation for Neil Patrick Harris, and Alice and Jason Siegel are okay actors, but he said, but Josh Radner is awful, and so is his character. I don't know what the problem is with Josh Radner, why people hate Ted so much. I mean, he's just a character. It's not, it's not like he's gonna strangle you for watching him, for not liking him, or I mean, what what's wrong with his character? And then he said, and then he insulted me, and and I, he kind of, I thought he kind of insulted me for saying, you should feel bad for liking a show, and I have autism disability, so I take offense, so I get offended really easily, and then I call him a douchebag, and then he said, you're a cock-hungry faggot with bad taste, and now I insulted you, and then I said, and then I told him to suck a dick and choke on it, sorry I'm saying that, 
and then and then I call him I call him a bland loser and I told him I'm 24 and I told him to watch it and and told him to back off and I told him my fiance got me into the show because we're we're basically engaged, sort of, because we've been together for seven years, almost. And then I apologized to him later. And he said, And don't... And I don't give a shit about your fiancé. You literally make no sense. You bring up random shit, and he spelled fiancé wrong. Because there are two ways of spelling fiancé. There's F-I-A-N-C-E-E -E is a girl. F-I-A-N-C-E -E is a guy. And he said, you're the type of dumbass that makes up this show's audience. Also, you you sound extremely gay. Big, f And he, he said I was gay for talking about my friend who's about six foot six and has a body full of muscle. But, um, and my friend, and my friend watches that. Um, and, 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 I mean, there are a few episode there are a few tv shows i'll watch the only tv shows i really watch are how i met your mother family guy fuller house and there's another show i watch um there's how i met your mother family guy the simpsons and fuller house um i've seen the show freaks and geeks and i like fuller house also bob saget's in both of them He's in How I Met Your Mother and in and in Fuller House. In in people said he's not in How I Met Your Mother, but he actually is. But you never see him because he's actually the guy who narrates the show. He's the older version of Ted. He's the older version of Ted Mosby. I've seen every I've seen every How I Met Your Mother episode I, to be honest I started January 1st again and now it's February 26th I'm already on the 7th season I mean occasionally I'll watch 3 sometimes I'll watch 3 episodes a day but on occasions I'll go to 6 Usually it's three, but sometimes I'll go to six. One time I'll watch ten Family Guy episodes in a day at nighttime. And usually I'd like to say something. Like, when a show... Yeah, and that would be a great feeling if I lived with Nick, his fiance, and my fiance, and we were all watching How I Met Your Mother and eating, like, maybe chips or something, or maybe having a little snack and laughing and enjoying each other's company. That's just what I want to do. I want to be able to have friends, go to work sometimes, do the stuff on my spare time, and hang out with them because they mean more than the world to me. Brittany means more than the world to me. And, and there is something I'd like to mention about this. This is a great show. I mean, it. the characters I think are really, 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 really likable. I thought Josh Radner play, portrayed his character very well, and you just don't hear much from from the from from Josh Radner anymore because he got he 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 was really successful in this show. This show actually reached a lot of success, and to the people who hate it, I'm sorry, but not my problem. <laughs> but I just like to say that if you say. You should feel bad for liking the show to someone who you don't even know. You should actually think about what you're saying because you're actually making yourself look like a dick. I love, I love the show, and so did Josh. So did uh, Bob Saget. He said it was a weird gift in his life. And I mean, every now and then, I'll I'll watch. I'll watch an episode off of here because my favorite episodes are 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 
somewhere on here. And it's like the same thing. But I'd like to say something about this. This show meant a lot to me, but there are some episodes... Season 8 and 9 had episodes I didn't like as much as the other ones. I like season 1, I like season 2, I like season 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. But season 8 and 9 I didn't like as much. Season 8 had a few good episodes. Like the one where Barney proposed to Robin. The one where he broke up with Quinn Garvey. I like the song at the end, The Museum of Flight. That's how I got into the song was from How I Met Your Mother. And a lot of people actually liked that song. And then there was an episode. There are these. Um, this song. This, this show got me into a lot of music too. And I like singing the, the theme song to the How I Met Your Mother. Every time I watch the episode. I will always sing along with the theme song. Going. Ba -ba 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 -da 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 and something like that. Yeah I usually get. Get, get to it and um um there was something else I wanted to say yeah it got me into a song called waiting looking for an invitation or waiting for an invitation when Ted got left at the altar and I I like that song and it's a perfect breakup song and the one where Quinn broke up with Quinn and Barney broke up and Barney had his moments of being a magician. And he said, the only person I could reveal the trick to is another magician. And one guy said, well, I'm a magician. And he said, prove it. And he proved it to him. <laughs> it was funny when he said, well, I'm a magician. Yeah, I'd love to be a magician. There are, there are some noticeable things throughout the, the show that... Um, there were a few good episodes in season 8. And I can name a few. There it is. And, um, I'd just like to say, so Ted Mos, I want to tell you, Ted is a, is the main character, and he's a college prof, and he's an architect. And he is the main protagonist, and he tells the story of how he met the mother, and he wanted to find the one, and and Ted would jump around from girl to girl, and then there's Jason Siegel's Ted's best friend, um, Marshall Erickson is Ted's best friend who wants to save the environment, and I'll tell you the job posts in a little bit of whatever goes on. Then there's, I mean, I'll tell you their jobs in a little bit. And then, in season eight, it kind of went downhill from that. But I like the, the prenup. That was one of my favorite episodes. The autumn of, of breakups. Some funny is, <laughs> the the, the cast the 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 boyfriends. <laughs> How they were all um, messing around. I mean, I love some parts in season 8 with all the boyfriends and all that. Because some of them were just plain silly. I mean, it was a great show to watch. And I still watch it because I love it. And... And there's the final page. That's when Barney and Robin got engaged. I like that one. I like some of the other episodes in there. But it was more uneventful. At one point I got annoyed when I was watching season 8 and 9. Because I finally figured out that I didn't like season 8 and 9 as much as I did like the other ones. But I still like the show. And then there's Last Forever. Which is the last episode. And people thought it was one of the worst endings in sitcom history. Because the thing that really... The thing that really bummed me out about the ending was this. They broke up the group of friends. So Barney, Robin, Lily, Robin. So Barn, so Ted, Marshall, Robin, Barney, and Lily all broke up their friendship. And then... Or they didn't really break off the friendship. They stopped hanging out. They just said that part of them was over. And then later, there's the 
there's Ted, so Ted Mosby is played by Josh Radner, and, and first he starts off, and he's got, <laughs> he, he's got names in the show, he, and he's got nicknames, he's got T-Dog, t Mose, Teddy Westside, Schmosby, Professor Mosby, and then there was, um, there was Dr. X, Teddy Bear, something, and then President, Superstar, Mr. Awesome, Jed Mosley, because this is what really infuriates me. The reason his name was Jed Mosley was some was one of his ex girlfriends, um, one his ex fiance's husband at that time made a video made a movie off of him and it was humiliating. It humiliated Ted. I wish that they would have had Ted in the in the show make the true video so it would make Tony look like a douchebag instead of the hero. And then there was Sex Architect because some guy made video made a movie called made himself called Ted Mosby or Lance Hardwood Sar Sex Architect. And what and he's from Ohio and he lived in the apartment which was a big part of the show. He lived there for Season 1 through 7 and then gave it up and then went to Ted's second apartment. And then he and then he was going to move to Chicago but then decided to move into his house because he had a girlfriend or he he met a girl and then they became husband and wife and then she died and This is what I'd like to say about Ted. Um he had a lot going for him at some parts. I mean, he had he had I mean, Marshall was a good friend to him, and they would all be supportive. And they would crack jokes at each other and have fun. And, and, and the apartment was a big, was a big, um, thing for him, because he, um, he and Marshall lived there, and Lily um stayed there a lot but didn't really live there but then basically or actually basically lived there practically lived there so then she moved in and then she moved out because her and Marshall broke up and then her and Marshall got back together six months later about and then finally got back together and got married and had three kids it was unsaid if they had any more and then there was Ted's and then there was Ted's romances. He and he had serious relationships. He had Victoria, Robin, Stella, Zoe, and Tracy McConnell. So he had Victoria, Robin Shabatsky, Stella Zinman, Zoe Pearson, and Tracy McConnell. Out of all the girls he dated, out of the top five, the ones I like, number five was Trudy, who he, who he um who he kind of slept with. Number four was Tracy McConnell, the mother. Number three was Zoe. Number two was Victoria. Number one was Robin. I, I, I liked... Um, I, I actually liked Zoe because I thought she was actually a sweetheart. She was just trying to defend what she loved. And I could tell why she did, but then... They kind of didn't get along all the time. They were kind of against each other being, being, um, being together. Okay. All right. Out of the five girlfriends I really didn't like that he dated, number one, out of the worst, was Jeanette. Number two was Karen. They were both terrible. Number three was, excuse me, number three was Natalie. Number four was 
Blah Blah, a.k.a. Carol, number five was Naomi. Out of, out of all the worst, you go from five being Naomi, a.k.a. the slutty pumpkin, which he tries to be with her, and, and then he got with her, and really, he actually didn't work well with her. Number four, of course, was Blah Blah, a.k.a. Carol. Number three was... These are out of the worst, but number number three is Natalie. Number two is Karen. Number one, Jeanette being the worst girl he ever dated. Oof. They said Zoe was the best and the worst and one of the worst, but I liked Zoe. He had like one or two dates before and some other stuff. Yeah, he dated this girl. There, there, there was something funny in my favorite episode. It's called Swarly. And this is just funny because Barney goes nuts every time it gets called Swarly. And, and it was just priceless. This was so hilarious. Every time I watch it, I just crack up every time I watch that episode. Me and my friend Nick actually weren't were watching that video not too that episode not too long ago. And this girl named Chloe had like these girls had like the crazy eyes, so <laughs> And and you should always stay away from crazy eyes. So they said so they said that girl had the crazy eyes, Chloe, the one that Marshall was dating, and he was, how should I say this, so he was dating a girl who had crazy eyes apparently, but you're not too sure, and that girl who played Chloe was in Deadpool, she was the one who played Wade's girlfriend, Deadpool's girlfriend, and number two, they had... Barney met a girl at, at the um, at the who who at the bar that they hung out with who had the crazy eyes, but he ignored it. He he said he saw that she had the crazy eyes, but he ignored it. But then, sure enough, he he knew how crazy she was because she said, "Would you like to have a three way?" And he said, "Of course." And said, "It'll be me, you, and Mr. Weasels." So it's a stuffed animal. So it's either him having. It was just a twosome with the third one watching from a chair. So it's either Barney having sex with the girl while the bear watches. The girl having sex with the bear while Barney watches. Or Barney having sex with the bear as the girl watches. And they said, which one were you? And he said, I'd rather not say. Which one were you? And he said, I'd rather not say. And then there was this crazy girl. I mean, extremely crazy. Ted dated and saw that she had serious crazy eyes. But he told himself he was just imagining it. But then there was this girl who accidentally almost hit Ted with her car. And she said, oh, I'm sorry. And he said, it's okay. And then she said, watch where you're going. And hit her car with a bat and then shattered her windshield. Which, if so, if someone shattered my windshield, I would press charges on them. If someone did that. Yeah. And this was, this was one of my favorite parts of... of This was probably my favorite part of Swarly. Let me see. Oh, here it is. So this is how Barney reacted when they wanted him to say Swarly. No, I don't want to. I hate it. I hate it. It's not... No, I don't want to. I hate it. I hate it. It's not funny. Never been funny. I've never done any... No! <laughs> Well, um, to wrap this up, I just want to tell you to buy this, or at least watch it more than once. It's helped me out a lot, and speaking of that, I'm going to watch more of it just after I end this video. It's 5.38 a.m. Thank you for watching. Peace. Check it out. It's a great show. It's helped me out a lot. Peace.